Trails continue to pop up around Perry County. The newest one will be at the Black Gold Plaza around the ARH Medical Mall. WIMT's Will Puckett caught up with a group in town for the next month, assisting the mastermind behind the one mile track. The rock is going down. With Pathfinders to make uh, doing some trail work over here. Aaron Brown and a group of his peers from across the country are working with Ben Brayman and others to help with a handful of projects across Perry County. We do a lot of trail work just in general for the work that we do, and I think it's important because it, it brings the community out, and I think that's really, really important is to make sure you build the community. Brayman has built a number of the trails across the county, and for this group to learn from him, well, it's opening up their eyes. Uh, a lot, you know, it, it's, uh, especially the what we're do work we're doing right now, we've done some similar work. He has like his own technique. An idea all his own is something this group of kids are picking up on. I'm learning a little bit more about the trail making process, um, and we're definitely using different tools than I, I think we've used before. And in the meantime, enjoying all the perks the mountains offer. I'm from a very small flatland beach area, so like the mountains are, seeing a lot of mountains is kind of crazy to me. While leaving an imprint on the region for years to come. In Perry County, Will Puck, Lee YMT, News. The group is also helping out with the Arts Alliance. They will be in town until the middle of April. A sad story tonight out of Pike County. Officials say a house fire killed a family dog. It happened yesterday around 10 a.m. Crews were called to Island Creek Road. It took 45 minutes to get the blaze under control. We are told all the family except the dog were able to get out safely. The American Red Cross was notified of the family's situation. Kentucky's largest school district was out again today. Jefferson County Public Schools have now called off two days in a row and five times in the last two weeks. Teachers called in sick to protest several bills moving through the Kentucky legislature. There are just short of 100,000 students enrolled in that district. Well, it is a cloudy day, but a warm one here in eastern Kentucky. Those clouds increasing from the strong low pressure system that is out to the west over top of Colorado. And we continue to look at that uh, developing strong low pressure at this time. Notice we take you out a very big view here on regional. You'll notice uh, two warm fronts. One warm front already moved through. Secondary warm front going to be working in. And the big story right now, sandwiched between two systems with one now off the east coast. We're where you can see that wind is originating from right there to the east of Washington, D.C. And another one out in the plains. And we're kind of caught in the middle with gusty winds. Notice the eastern portion of the United States not seeing wind gust at this time. But out in the western portion of our region, it's the 30s and 40 mile per hour wind gust. Which is why is starting tonight and going through tomorrow, a wind advisory will be in place. We'll be looking at those temperatures in Increasing as well. Steve, most of us sit in those upper 60s to lower 70s. Tomorrow, a lot of us will be in the mid 70s before some strong storms roll through. We'll break down those windy conditions and stormy details coming up in a few short minutes. All right, thank you, Andrew. It's been one year since Pikeville police officer Scotty Hamilton was shot and killed in the line of duty. Hamilton was on patrol with a state trooper in the Hurricane Creek area when it happened. Since then, John Russell Hall, who was later charged with Hamilton's murder, pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life without parole. Police Chief Chris Edmond says no amount of training can teach an officer to deal with a heartbreaking situation like this. You would never think that we would be able to keep going forward like we did, but we always knew in our heart that he would want us to keep pushing forward, keep doing what we was doing, and do it better than we ever did before. And I know that's what he would have wanted, and hopefully we've done that this year. Chief Edmonds says the support shown by the community since the day of Officer Hamilton's death has only grown stronger. One fourth grader in Florida honors fallen officers in a unique way. He runs. During his most recent trek, he dedicated one mile to Officer Hamilton. WIMT's Marion Fletcher talked with the 10-year-old about his mission. Many 10-year-olds are focused on video games or tablets. Meet Zachariah Cartledge. He's doing something different. You honor them in the correct way, 
in a respectful way and just do what you love to honor them. This Florida 10 year old is running for fallen officers. They do so much for us and when I hear an officer passes away, it just breaks my heart. On March 13th of last year, Pikeville police officer Scotty Hamilton was shot and killed in the line of duty. I was going through Facebook one night, just laying on the couch, and uh, Officer Blankenship, Russell Blankenship, uh, has shared a video. This is the video. I'll be running my first mile of the event to honor the life of Officer Pikeville. Last year, Jeff Elkins organized an 11.1K race to honor Hamilton. I had an, a medal, had a t-shirt, and thought, you know, if he's going to run the mile for Scotty, then he deserves Scotty's medal. Elkin says many adults should follow in Zachariah's fast footsteps. To show that this 10-year-old kid gets it, how important that these men are and the sacrifices they make. And although this kid backs the men in blue. I've been considering being a police officer, but I don't think I have the bravery to be a police officer. Honoring the fallen. It needs to stop and I'll keep doing this until it stops. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. This year, Zachariah Cartledge has run 54 miles since January 12th and has raised more than $32,000 this year alone. Good for him. The United States has joined the growing list of countries to ground the 737 MAX jets produced by Boeing. This is in direct response to the deadly Ethiopian Airlines and Lion Air crashes. President Trump spoke to reporters about this at the White House today. Planes that are in the air will be grounded if they're the 737 MAX, will be grounded upon landing at the destination. Uh, pilots have been notified. Uh, airlines have been all notified. Airlines are agreeing with this. The safety of the American people and all people is our paramount concern. Sunday's crash in Ethiopia killed all 157 people on board. It follows a crash last October of Lion Air Flight 610, also a 737 MAX 8. 189 passengers and crew were killed in that crash. The measles isn't the only disease people can get when they opt out of its vaccine. The Centers for Disease Control is reporting 151 cases of the mumps in the U.S. as of February 28th. 93 of those cases occurred in February. The number of mumps infections does not appear to be out of the ordinary, though. There were more than 2,000 cases reported in the U.S. last year. A mumps outbreak is currently underway at Temple University. The Philadelphia College is reporting 11 confirmed cases and 17 probable ones. R. Kelly appeared in a Chicago family courtroom today, just days after being bailed out of jail for a second time in two weeks. The Grammy Award-winning R&B singer is trying to get child support payments lowered. Kelly's lawyers told the court he is not working, so he can't afford his $21,000 a month payments. I am amazed that he's able to hold up. I, I have never met anyone who's under an onslaught from so many different places. The case is only part of the R&B singer's legal issues. Kelly is accused of sexually abusing four women, three of whom were underage at the time. Coming up on Mount Views at 5.30, one of the costliest mistakes people make with their finances is not having a will. We'll have some tips to help you prepare for estate planning. And the government is moving closer to banning flavored e-cigarettes. We'll have the details in our Money Watch report. And that strong low pressure system working to the east, bringing blizzard-like conditions for Colorado. For us, some strong storms. Those details are coming up in five minutes.